welcome back to another video guys hope you guys are having a fantastic day my name is trinity or be trinity uh i fish down here in minnesota for basically anything uh get out as much as i can every time i do go out i turn this little camera on and just with this little camera my life has changed completely i love doing this i'm never gonna stop doing this and um you guys can't see the water right here but um parked in this spot really 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 close to where i'm about to go fish uh brought all reliable with me today i don't fish live bait much but when i do it always turns out good because how can you not like live bait i don't care if you hate on me for fishing live bait uh obviously we're gonna throw some lures out today on top of having a live bait pull out it is legal to have two lines in this water that i'm fishing today today's main goal is uh smallmouth bass because i am fishing the zumbro today and every time i come to the zumbro i seem to run into a smallmouth bass which is one of my favorite species to target just for the pure fact of how hard they fight. Uh, there is nothing like catching a river smallmouth. Uh, whether you are new, this is your first or 50th video on the channel, I appreciate you as always. We're going to get down to the water, and um, I'm going to see you guys down there. Thank you for watching. See you guys in a second. Like I told you guys, I'm not just going to be throwing live bait. I've got this little uh, river to sea whopper plopper tied on here on my Vendetta. My 7.3 Vendetta, medium heavy, along with my 13 Inception. Uh, as you guys can tell from last video, there's a different rod on this reel because I recently took a trip up to Wisconsin and I snapped the old Hank Parker Signature Series. So I had to throw the old Vendetta on, that's okay. I love the Vendetta. So I got a Whopper Popper on this rod and I just got a tiny old jig head. This is a spot that um, I fished a lot when I was a kid. This is just downtown in the city that I live. So we're basically fishing urban right now. We are, this is the definition of urban bass fishing. Um, beautiful, beautiful spot down here on some rocks. We got a couple businesses behind us. And um, yeah, like I said, this is a spot. I fished a lot when I was a kid, but I slowly drifted away from this spot just because of how popular this spot usually is. Popular, popular is what I meant to say. Popular, not poplar. Uh, very, very, very popular fishing spot. Surprisingly, there's nobody here, but it is the Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock. Got some nice steps built down, directly down to the fishing spot. And we're gonna start off at this little uh, mini rapid set. I wouldn't say it's technically a spillway just because it's just kind of a drop off in the middle. There is a spillway that we will get to when we walk all the way down there. Uh, this is a spot, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have a leader tied onto this pole just because this is a spot where I have heard of pike being caught, but I've never caught one myself. And these damn lures are too expensive to take the risk. These whopper ploppers are a 14 to $17 each, depending on where you find them. Uh, that is enough talking for me. I'm going to get down there. I'm going to toss a line out. Like I said, and like I always say, thank you guys for being loyal and staying tuned to the channel. These uploads will never stop. Just like I will never stop fishing. See you guys in a second. I'm gonna set my worms in the shade here just so they don't get super hot right away and die. I'm gonna start off with the whopper plopper and cast up along this little edge because usually, I mean, back in the day, there was always a smallmouth sitting up here on the edge. So let's see if that applies for today as well. What sucks about using the whopper plopper in a leader is the leader wants it to sink, but if you just keep it up high enough, you usually don't have to worry about that. Bring it off the rocks and let's see what happens. Oh, no, that bird was just about to go for it. That's not what I'm after. Whopper plopper out to the middle. Let's see if anything wants to play. If you're gonna fish a top water in rapids like this, you definitely got to make sure that you're noisy and they can see it because underwater those rapids are making a lot of noise so you want to almost be louder than those rapids we got a couple people down there on that side actually dude just caught a fish i've never fished down that way much because this this place shallows out very 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 quick i'm not fishing the deepest water right now i'm fishing in probably three to four foot, maybe not even that, three to four foot of water. So I was really thinking that this top water was gonna do something, but it is not looking like they're interested. I'm gonna say one in a million chances that uh, we catch a muskie today, 
but if you're familiar with Minnesota and the Zumbro River, you know there is muskie in here. So if we run into one of those, that'll be a crazy day. All right, let's tie a worm on, see what happens. I guess we don't have to tie it on, we just gotta put it on the hook. No tying involved. That's crawfish color. One of my favorite colors for a whopper popper that they make. Get me a baby night crawler out of here. And like I said, the reason why I put these in the shade is because these things are already getting pretty hot, even in the shade. And a hot worm does not call for a hot bite. Oh, that is my favorite. Sweat right in the eyeball. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Ow. It is hot out here, guys. I do not know if I mentioned that. It is hot. When I'm talking hot, I'm talking 85, 85, no wind, all sun. And um, that's basically it. That's going to do it today, folks. If that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Make sure your drag set perfect. I'm going to get that right up in those rapids just had a bite right away within the first two minutes with the worm we already had a bite i knew this was going to happen there we go probably lost our worm from that snag oh wait never mind looks like we still got it nice still got the worm Right there. We're gonna wait patiently for something to happen here, folks. I might cast out another lure, see if I can't get something to bite. But uh, I'm gonna wait for this jig head and worm to go off. It's gotta go off, man. This place always produced when I was a kid, and it looks the exact same. There's no way it has changed this much since I was here since I was a kid. No way. I usually, I know I said tiny, but this isn't really that tiny, especially for river fishing. You never know what's down there. And uh, most of the fish that you're going to be targeting aren't going to be big enough to bite that hook. So I'm going to try throwing a smaller jig head on, see if that makes a difference. I'm tossing it out in the middle, basically right in that calm water. Smaller jig head tied on. Something's got to give, man. Something's got to give. Like I said, just throwing the worm out. How can you resist that? Got one. What do we got here, folks? Hooked up. What is this? Oh. The absolute, f wow. The only species I did not want to catch today. And we get a bullhead first cast. Yeah, I'm not touching that. It's in the family of catfish, but the only catfish I don't want to catch. See you later, bud. Nasty old bullhead. And if uh, we continue to catch those, we are going to move on. Because where there is one bullhead, there is usually hundreds. And that is not what I'm trying to do today. I am not trying to catch a hundred bullhead. Dang, bullhead. No wonder I was missing them. I'm going to run up to the car quick and grab a spinner bait. See if I can't catch a pike or a muskie today. Even a smallmouth. I've caught smallmouth on spinner baits before. All right. I don't got many color choices for spinner baits, but I know I do got some spinner baits in here. Um, take care of that later. We're gonna go with yellow. Just straight. Just straight one blade. I'm usually a fan of two blades. I got a couple double bladers in there, but I'm gonna try this out today. Right, so skunks out of the boat, skunks out of the boat. We got a bullhead. Like I said, not what I'm after, but it's a fish. Cannot complain about catching fish. Cannot complain about catching fish, but if that's all the fish I'm gonna catch, I am not fishing here. 
like you guys just saw, I just tied on this little spinnerbait. I'm gonna get it some action up here by these rapids. And I'm gonna see if we can't get a little pike to come out to play. Like I said, I know people have caught pike here, but personally, I never have. But I do not doubt it because the Zumbro is filled with mysteries. Every single time you come to the Zumbro, something always happens. Or a walleye. I've heard of walleye here too, which is very, very, very hard to believe considering I've been fishing the Zumbro for 10, 15 years and I've never seen a walleye. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, oh, something on the spinnerbait. Feels like a bass. Feels like a bass. On the spinnerbait, like I said, smallies will hit the spinner. Let's go, nice. Oh, come here, bud, come here, bud, come here, bud. Relax, you're good. I'll get you off the concrete, relax. Smallies will hit the spinnerbait. I don't want him out of the water for too long because he, he did fall on those steps. That is a healthy looking smallmouth. There's the first decent sized fish. Very, very, very healthy smallmouth, like I was saying. I would say maybe just around a pound, nothing crazy, but beautiful, beautiful Zumbro River smallmouth bass on that spinnerbait, guys. On the spinnerbait. That is crazy. That is very, very, very unexpected. When I said that, I could catch a smallie on a spinnerbait. I didn't expect to, but it happened. Okay, I don't want him out of the water for long. Thank you for biting, little guy. Go back to your dark home and uh, enjoy your night, man. Nice. So first, 15, 20 minutes, we got a bullhead and a smallmouth bass. A decent little smallmouth bass for the river. Um, if I was a kid, I mean, I'm still, I'm still happy about that. But uh, if I was a kid, that would be a very, very big smallmouth because uh, Zumbro has lots of smallies but nothing huge. I've never pulled a huge smallmouth out of the Zumbro. Um, yeah, let's get back in the water, guys. Out that little white and yellow spinnerbait. Come on, let's see a muskie. Or I cast it right on top of a rock that felt like a fish. I don't know. We'll go back in the same spot, see if there's a rock there. Oh yeah, there's rocks there, Never mind. Figured I got out deep enough, but you never know. Oh, there's one. What is that? No way, is that a pike? Guys, we do not have a pike. No way. Let's go. That is the first pike I have ever caught out of the Zumbro. Look at how barely hooked he was right in the skin of his mouth. No way that just happened. Right after that smallmouth, beautiful Zumbro River pike. Nothing crazy, nothing to brag about, but that is a beautiful, beautiful looking pike. He's got the blue and he's got the purple. Look at that. What an awesome fish, you guys. Like I said, nothing crazy, nothing to brag about, but it's a pike. And like I said, I've never caught a pike. I've never caught a pike down in this spot nor have I seen one. And what is that, 25 minutes, 20 minutes, we already got a pike? It is so crazy to feel the difference in a pike caught in the river. I grew up catching pike on a lake. I mean, they fight good, but this thing has so much energy. And, um. If you guys are worried about the way I'm holding it, if you've ever pike fished before, you know these things are absolute units, brutes. Nothing can kill these fish. I'm gonna get him back in the water. I thought it was a muskie at first, you guys, because of those colors on the side, but he's out of here. I'll have to see another day. Wow. My first Zumbro River pike caught on camera. That is freaking awesome. Never, ever have I seen a pike in this spot. Like I said, I've heard of them, but I've never seen one. Let's go. Let's go. It's crazy how a fish of that size can get you so excited, especially in a spot that you've been fishing your whole life and never seen one before. That is awesome. I'm gonna get my line back in the water. Like I said, that came off that single bladed 
spinnerbait right there chartreuse and white wow i am pumped guys i am pumped i'm casting this basically across the whole waterway i'm not getting all the way across but i'm covering a lot of this water so if there is something in here i'll probably run into him i'm in mean, probably one of the best fishing times of the year everything is hungry right about now beginning of june everything is hungry especially in i guess i can't say especially but for minnesota i've always found june late may to be some of the best fishing when it comes to basically any species i wonder if it's i wonder if it's little small mouth that are hitting my spinner oh right as they hit the water something nice guys something decent oh yeah what do we got another smallmouth another smallmouth i think yes dude like i was telling you guys there is nothing like a fight from a river smallmouth wow that is awesome if you guys can see that blood dripping from him he did get hooked just in the, just in the cheek but if he's bleeding i don't want him out for long nothing to brag about but still an awesome awesome looking smallmouth probably in that one pound range a little bit smaller than the first one but uh i'm gonna get him back in the water thanks for biting buddy sorry for hooking you in the cheek you'll be okay i promise see you later wow we are probably a little over 30 minutes into this little adventure down here and this place is super super close to my house i just moved to this town actually i grew up in this town a little bit when i was younger and then i moved away to a different town maybe 20 miles away um and i'm back i'm back in my stomping grounds and i'm gonna use that to my advantage as much as i can like i said we're fishing the zumbro river today fishing an awesome little urban spot down here wish i'd have brought the drone so i could show you guys but uh my drone is acting up lately and i would hate for my drone to act up while it's over the water so one pike two small mouth and a bullhead four fish 30 minutes how can you complain about that i'm gonna get my line back in the water and there is not much explaining to do for what i'm doing like i said we switched over to the spinnerbait and the spinnerbait is producing there's not much you can say else about that besides the spinnerbait is producing I'm gonna get my line back in the water. Catch you guys in a minute. <sighs> kind of sketchy. Kind of sketchy getting down to the dam, considering these rocks are absolutely filled with snakes. Whether I like it or not, that's just what I'm gonna have to deal with if I wanna get down to this dam. I know there's snakes in here. Ooh, man, ooh, 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 ooh. Whew, wow, that could have been bad. You always got to watch your step, man. Especially when walking on big rocks like this. You never know which rock is loose. You never know which one is solid. So always try to double check and not put all your weight on the rock before you go down. Because that can lead to very, very serious injury. I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds cheesy. But you really do not want to be falling on these rocks, man, because not a lot of places to save yourself. And once you're going down and you can't find a spot to catch yourself, it's game over. These rocks do not forgive, man. All right. It's going to be hard for you guys to hear me up here, but I'm going to get up here and take a couple casts, see if I can't catch anything. Like I said, probably super, super hard to hear me down here. But I'm gonna chuck this spinnerbait out, see if we can't run into something. So shallow. Super, super shallow. I highly doubt there's any musky or pike or bass. I mean, there's probably a couple bass, but this water is so shallow, man so shallow i'm hitting a rock about every five seconds okay, well 
I didn't give it my all, but I gave it my best. And um, I just think it's too shallow over there, man. The river right now is shallow in general. So spots that are already generally shallow are gonna be way shallow. So I'm gonna walk back up these rocks. Like I said, not the funnest thing ever to walk on snake infested rocks but got to do what you got to do i don't know if we're going to switch spots just yet i do have a couple more spots on the zumbro that i know are full of fish and i have caught fish there before so maybe we'll head over to a different spot but for now i'm going to focus on walking on these rocks getting back up to the car if you've made it this far in the video i appreciate you all right like i was saying if you made it to this point in the video I appreciate you whether you watch the whole video whether you watch half the video whether you just clicked on the video and gave the video a chance I appreciate you just for stopping by and staying tuned um, I think we are gonna switch spots I'm back at the car now like I said it is very 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 hot out here <sighs> dripping sweat from every pore of my body but that doesn't mean I'm gonna give it up because obviously the fish are out so if the fish are out I might as well be out I have no excuse the fish can't go home and turn a fan on. I can go home and turn a fan on once this is over with. Fish can't do that. So the fish can't do that. I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, I'm going to switch spots over to a spot that's maybe five, ten minutes away. This spot's going to be a little bit harder to get to because I know the grass grows pretty high here. But uh, I got trusty old Chetty. Old Chetty here with me. My Chetty. I'm going to bring him down, chop as much crap down as I can. So I don't get full of ticks, full of bugs, full of moths, full of mosquitoes, full of whatever wants to consume my body. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to get down there. I'm going to stop talking and I'll see you guys at the next spot. Okay, so somehow in the first time of me being in this area for 22 years, I'm stopped at a train in the middle of town. Um, I hope this doesn't stay common because it is super busy around this area. Lots of impatient people. Today is one of those days where I am in no rush to do anything. And as you can see, we are stuck here. Wish I could have got up and going sooner, a little bit sooner, just so I could have missed the train. But like I said, I'm in no rush today. This train cannot last forever. So just stay calm and hopefully we can get through this. Keep the nerves low, keep the hopes high. Hopefully that there's a muskie that wants to play in the next spot that we go to because like i said the zumbro river is full of muskies whether it be from the start of it to the end of it i know there's muskies in there and muskies got to be hungry too right so yeah i'm gonna wait for this train to pass by once this train passes by see you guys in the next spot like i said next spot's gonna be a little bit harder to get to but the fishing is always amazing at this spot we're basically going to fish a little spillway or a dam or whatever you want to call it so i will see you guys at the next spot Alrighty folks, we have arrived at the second spot. I don't know how much of this you guys can see, but uh, as you can see, there's a little spillway back there. I'm standing up on a pretty high ledge, but it does look like somebody has been here recently and they have cleared me out a path. I'm still gonna bring down the Chetty, but uh, you never know. We might not even have to deal with a path or tall grass today because I mean, this spot is fished but not as frequently as the last spot we were in. Somebody else showed me this spot and um, I've been in love with it ever since. I only fish here a couple times a year just because it's one of those spots where once you fish a little bit, it seems to die off for a couple days after. So like I said, I don't fish here often, but um, I am seeing some massive, massive carp down there over in that shallow water, right at the bottom of that spillway. And I've got my ultralight with me today. So if I end up tossing on a worm again and we hook into a monster carp on the ultralight that is gonna put up for an awesome video, an awesome fight, an awesome time, we're gonna get down there. I'm gonna stop talking. Like I said, if you got to this part and this far in the video, I appreciate you as always. And I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get down there. Catch you guys in a minute. So like I was just saying, back up at the top there, it looks like somebody has cleared us a path down here. Now, this spot is always cleared out just because nothing really grows here in the middle. But it's always the walk 
right before the spot that gets you full of itch weed. Oh no, we forgot Chetty. I do not want to be responsible for some homeless person finding my Chetty on the side of the road and going on a Chetty spree. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna grab Chetty. Chetty, there you are, Chetty. Don't you be running away from me like that. Don't need you in the wrong hands. Not to say it's already in the right hands, but hey, I'm using it for what it needs to be used for. I don't know how legal it is to carry a machete downtown, but who needs to know? You guys are the only one that know. So if you guys want to snitch on me, be my guest. I can already tell that I'm going to need to use the machete here. Man, it is always insanely cold back there in this little sewer. Always. So I just got to not be a wuss about it. Hopefully, we don't run into too many ticks today. Because as you can tell from the last video, me and ticks do not have a very good relationship. Oh, that's itchweed. Gosh, dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Come on now. Smooth out for me here. Smooth out. Come on, come on. Why is this place always so overgrown? Somebody from the city, come out here and chop this. So I don't gotta do it every time I go fishing. Sucks. All right, looks a little bit shorter, but oh man, all itchweed. Every single bit of this is itchweed and thorn. That's thorn, here we go. That's what I like to see, regular plants, no itchweed. But we are in, we're in it. Almost there. Almost there. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. All right. Down to the spot. I'm sure this spot looks a little familiar for some of you OGs on the channel. Because we've definitely filmed here before quite a bit. And if you're from the area, you probably know where I'm at. This is no secret spot. Oh, there's one. All right. Well, I think we have something figured out here, folks. I think this swim bait might have just been the ticket. That's beautiful, beautiful smallmouth. Dang, look, I'm assuming there's some, you'll be seeing some of these carp in the background. Thanks for biting, buddy. But, um, no, like I said, I finally just made the switch over to this little tiny swim bait, this little Kytec swim. I think we have figured it out, people. Let's get one small, let's get one decent one. Let's get a two pounder. Oh, no way. No way guys. As I was just saying it, hooked up, nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish, oh yes, nice smallie. Nice smallie. Let's go. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass. Definitely the biggest one at this spot. Amazing colors on this guy. Nothing to brag about, but that is an awesome fish. Especially for a little stretch of river like this. I will take that any day. Beautiful, 
beautiful smallmouth bass. Like I said in the beginning, this was our main goal for today, and we have definitely accomplished it. All right, buddy. See you later. The part that blows my mind about fishing is you could spend, just like I did, I just spent over an hour casting multiple lures, even the live bait. Not to say I was actually getting a good chance with the live bait. Also, I'm sorry if it's hard to hear me. Like I said, I'm right by the spillway, but it's just insane how you can spend so much time chasing these fish and that tiny little change is what does it. Switching over to this swim bait was the best idea I've had all day down at this spot because it's actually producing fish. I'm not struggling to catch fish anymore. I'm not snapping my line off. Just a little bit different technique with a little bit different of an approach makes the whole world of difference. I'm gonna get my line back out there. Cast it down this shoreline again. I know there's gotta be another one. Maybe in this corner. Yep, there we go. What do we got here? What do we got here? What do we got here? Nice fish, guys. Nice fish. Please stay on. Oh, nice large mouth. Nice large mouth. Come on. Let's go. Wow. That's got to be one of the bigger bass I've caught on the Zumbro. And for the video, too, let's freaking go guys that is what i'm talking about sitting right in that corner by himself look at that absolute chunk nice fish i'm gonna show him off to you guys a little bit all right whatever it seems to happen to me every time i'm in this spot but you guys saw that fish i would say on the the low the lower side of two pounds maybe two pounds on a good day uh, I was giving him a drink of water down there just because I wanted to set the camera up and I want to show you guys a better view, but uh, the strength of him was too strong. He got he got right out of my hands, and he is back home. But that doesn't matter. We got the catch on camera. You guys saw you guys saw the fish. Nothing crazy. Biggest bass of the day though, on that little swim bait. Like I said, it is insane how much a little bit of a difference of a change of lure can make such a big difference when it comes to the amount of fish that you're catching. Um, I'm gonna get my line right back in the water, maybe drop it down here in this corner again, see if his grandpa's sitting down there or something. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate you, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in a second. That is awesome. That was a nice sized bass for the river. I don't catch many largemouth down here, but it seems like, oh wow. Oh wow, I thought we just had a river monster, guys. I thought we just had a river monster. Oh, oh, I was snagged to a carp. No way, a fish came back for it. No way, we were just snagged on a carp and he, he hit it after, no freaking way, guys. This day, well this spot is absolutely turning around inhaled the swim bait inhaled the swim bait nothing to brag about but definitely a nice another little smallmouth thanks for biting buddy that was the craziest thing ever i got snagged got unsnagged hooked a cart by accident and that dude still came for it. Alrighty folks, I think that is gonna wrap up the video. If you did enjoy today's video, please make sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you are new. Uh, it is absolutely free, costs you absolutely no money. Like I said in the beginning, whether this is your first or your 50th video you've watched on my channel, I appreciate you always. I appreciate all my loyal fans staying tuned for all the videos no matter what I do. Uh, today started off pretty hot, I will not lie. I cannot believe we actually caught a pike down at that last spot. Like I said, I've never seen pike, but I've heard of it. And guess what? Today we actually accomplished a mission and we caught a pike and a smallmouth. Main goal for today was smallmouth, but we ended up catching that pike. Bunch of smallies down here on the swim bait once I finally figured out 
how to do it. Uh, like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified every time I upload. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.